Cater at the Handy Quilter Studio, and we are so excited today to have this webinar. We have two great guests. First, we have Vicki Anderson, who is the CEO and publisher for Meander Publishing, and those are my two favorite magazines, and she'll introduce those and talk about those a little bit, I hope. Uh, Angela Walters is a machine quilter and author, and I spend it about three days with Angela at Road to California and just learned so much. So we're way excited to have them with us today to share some of their excitement over modern quilts. So I'm going to turn the time over right now to Vicki Anderson and we'll just start our webinar. Um, as Marie said, I'm Vicki Anderson and I produce Modern Quilts Unlimited and Machine Quilting Unlimited magazines. And this modern um, aesthetic that's taking over uh, a lot of areas of quilting has, has got a lot of interest with everybody. We thought we would start out by giving you a definition of what we think modern quilting is. It's, it's basically just a fresh approach to uh, traditional quilting or any type of quilting that you've done. People are um, embracing functionality. They like asymmetric designs, reinterpretation, reinterpreting traditional blocks and patterns, and uh, using solids, bright colors, grays, whites for backgrounds, and a lot of graphic materials. And modern quilters can be anybody. There's no set group that says, I am a modern quilter that's completely different from any other part of quilting. It's just a different way to look at things. Um, in my own guild, we have young and more experienced people. We have men and women. We have beginners. We have experts. Um, we try not to follow all of the rules just because it helps you grow and, and innovate. But we do use traditional techniques. A lot of modern cultures are very involved in Internet and technology. And, uh, but they still go back to the roots of, of pioneers of quilting and just bring a different perspective. I'm going to talk first about what a modern quilt looks like. Oh, well, I'm going backwards. <laughs> um, a modern quilt looks like any other quilt with just a little twist. You can see here, these are some of the quilts that we've shown in our magazine or on our website. There's use of bold colors with a traditional pattern um, in the first one, which is uh, Craving Sunshine. In mod circuitry, it's going a new, a new way, a sort of computer look to it, and using grays. A lot of grays are used in the backgrounds. In Katie Spencer's um, Unraveled, she has a very improvised central block, and it's surrounded by uh, just improvisational piecing, something that she saw when she was doing rubber stamping, and it just struck her as maybe that could be a pattern. In uh, All About Gray, which actually was our cover quilt for the uh, winter issue, Missy Shepler wanted to take the gradations of the gray, and you'll see this quilt in detail a little further on, um, and show how gray can be very powerful on its own and just a pop of color and a very graphic design. And then Faith Jones in Starfall, it's a tribute to Roots again. These are very traditional patterns used in a new and exciting way. Modern quilters are, modern quilts use a, a, lot of fab, a lot of solid fabrics and solid colors. And uh, in this case, Northcott puts out uh, several different colorways, but all of the fabric companies are embracing this. Uh, the Kona cottons were reduced to just a few colors of, uh, a few years ago, but the, this excitement about the solids, they now have introduced you know, dozens of new colors, and you can find just about anything you want to use in a, quote, modern quilt. Next slide is um, graphic prints. The um, quilters are de designing with the graphic, with the fabric companies, a lot of graphic quilts, a lot of chevrons, a lot of bright colors, a lot of very urban looking mixed in with the solids. But first and foremost, one of the main colors that modern quilters have embraced recently is gray. And gray can be solids. It can be graphics. It can be background. It can be used extensively um, with other colors, such as turquoise and yellow and orange, and really make them pop. 
And you'll see a lot of that throughout the quilts that I'm going to show you in, in just a few moments. So fabrics are very, very uh, changing along with the modern aesthetics. In the yeah, next slide. Was a time, Vicki, where I would just do just the prints, and now I am just loving all of these solid colors. And there's so much to see and so many, you know, the colors just are so fun to work with. Well, they are fun, and they're, and they're being used in, so, in new and unusual ways. And yes, we've seen solids throughout the history of quilting, but now they seem to be predominant with, with this aesthetic. And use, mixing the colors together in ways that we might not have. You know, I've always been a believer in the color wheel. Well, that might not always be necessary anymore. You know? I mean, just yeah, yeah, it's so play. fun to play the colors out and, and just play. And, and that's, that's one of the, the things of modern quilting, is it, it's fun, it's just fun. Um, I'm moving to the next slide, and modern quilters take traditional patterns and revamp them sometimes. Sometimes they use them as is, and uh, sometimes they show it in a new and different way that, that we might not have thought before. This block is called a churn dash, it's also called a shoe fly in some circles. And typically, you make it six or eight inches. You make multiples of it. You put it in rows. Um, maybe you make a positive negative to make a little bit of design. And you have a churn dash quilt. Well, in today's world, that's been turned on its end. And in the next slide, Anne-Marie Cheney, in, an, in our uh, upcoming spring issue, she took that churn dash block, blew it up to 75 inches square, to make a quilt out of one block. She calls it horsefly uh, versus shoe fly. That is beautiful. It's, uh, it's very fun. Uh, she was able then to take the large square and triangle background blocks and improvise and play. Those are all pieced together. That's not a pattern print. And use them in, in new and unusual ways. And then use the main pieces of the, of the pattern that stands out um, in white which gave her room to play with the quilting. And we're here to talk about the quilting today. So let me point out that because this is such an angular quilt with the squares, triangles, and straight lines, she felt that it needed softening, so she used circles. And then circles everywhere, and then overlapping circles, and smaller circles and larger circles. To me, it kind of feels like bubbles. And this quilt, when you look at it, when you see it in person as well, it just feels like it's moving. It has a lot of movement, and it's, it's really a fun quilt. I'm going to have trouble sending it back to her for sure when we're finished <laughs> with all of our photography. Um, the next slide is uh, negative space, which is uh, very prevalent in modern quilts. There's a lot of designing going on, but there's some place to rest your eye. There's some place to quilt. There's some place just to, to relax on the quilt. Jackie Gehring is one of the board members of the Modern Quilt Guild. She's written books. She teaches extensively. She's written several times for our magazines. And uh, she has a series, uh, multiple quilts that use a negative space in a very intriguing way. In fact, in our spring issue, she's writing an entire article on uh, quilting the negative space. In this quilt called Urban Garden, her prints were so graphic and so bold that she wanted a restful place, and so she used an off-white for the background, which then allowed the quilting, even, if, even though it's a simple quilting technique, it allowed it to stand out and really show, show off, if you will. And on the next slide, there is a close-up of the quilting. Very simple, straight line, well it's squiggly line, but in straight orderly rows about a quarter of an inch apart. But you really see the quilting because of all of that negative space. It allows the quilting to be the star without overwhelming or ruining any of the effects of the graphic quilts, or the graphic designs, excuse me, in the, in the fabrics behind. But I love the quilting. You see the quilting and you see the quilt and the colors. She yeah, Jackie uses that quilting technique. Um, I've seen her use it multiple times, and it really, it flattens the quilt. It allows it to hang beautifully or lay beautifully on the bed, but it also really just gives it that edge that it's finished and just polished. I really, really like it a lot. 
Yeah, that one's beautiful. The quilt that I spoke about earlier, all about gray by Missy Shepler, that we used on the cover of the, of the winter issue, it's a great example of taking that negative space and marrying it with very graphic design. I, imagine if she'd have used some sort of a print behind all of that gradated gray. Your eyes wouldn't know where to go and you would just bounce all over the place. But also to relieve it, she put in a pop of green, red, blue. And I don't know if you can see as well on this particular picture, but she did the same in the border. She did a, a, a dark border, but she used red at the bottom, green at the top, and, there, and blue on the, on the right side, just a little bit, just to draw your eye around the quilt. And it was a very, very effective technique. On the, on the next slide, where we have a close-up of it, you can see she did simple echo quilting and in the diamonds she just outlined the gray um, chevrons but in the white diamonds she just echo quilted around and around and just beautiful beautiful effect um, I know it's hard to see white on white in, in these slides sometimes but it, it was a very graphic look to it without overpowering the quilt how big is this quilt Nikki oh this, you know? this quilt is not uh, I don't I have it right in front of me so I'm going to guess that it's about 30 by 40, 45. It's not a large quilt. Um, but so I just want to remind the viewers that we will have these as a PDF version after, and you'll be able to go back in and see the pictures of these, and you'll be able to see that detail in the quilting. But yeah, yeah, you can you can make it larger on your screen and really look at it because it's beautiful quilting, and she, and it's done on a, on a, on a domestic sewing machine, which scares me. <laughs> I'm a long armor, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The next series of of quilts that we're going to talk about are from QuiltCon 2013. And if you're not familiar with that, QuiltCon is the first conference specifically for modern quilters. It was held in Austin, Texas. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, in, in, in late February, and it was very interesting. It, it, it was a well put together show. There was a lot to look at, a lot to see, good vendors, um, but the quilts were definitely the star. And I could have walked around all day doing nothing but just photographing quilts. I have a few of them here to show you and to talk about the quilting. The first one is called Double Edged Love by Victoria Finley Wolf. It was quilted by Lisa Sipes and it was the best of show winner. And if you were there and walked up to that quilt, you would understand immediately why it was best of show. And this is interesting. Here's a very modern quilter. Uh, Victoria tends to do architectural type quilts uh, for big New York firms, for interior designers. But this one is a nod to our traditions. It's a double wedding ring quilt. But look at what she did with it. She, she you, very good use of the white space, bringing the colors in, and then the very strong graphics that you wouldn't expect to see in a double wedding ring quilt. And then Lisa took it a step further and um, quilted the heck out of this thing, but still didn't overpower it. If you look at the next slide, there's a close up and you can see how she followed the double ring double wedding ring pattern but stayed within the aesthetic of the quilt in some areas she just did textural quilting in others there are perfectly lined up rows of little circles and and uh, pebbles and in others she just quilted it in the more graphic areas she just quilted it to hold it together and just give it some excitement but it was really thought out how it was handled, whether she did it in stripes or did it in rows or, or did it in just tex te excuse me, texture. I'm having difficulty talking today. Um, she thought through each and every circle as she worked on it and all the melons and, and everything. It, it was a great collaboration of these two, and it certainly deserved the Best of Show designation. Yeah, that is beautiful. Yeah, I love the colors. The colors just, you know, that pink. I'm not a pink person, but that pink just drew me in, and it just was the right complement to everything that Victoria had on that quilt. And I don't know if many of you know Victoria. Uh, she's an amazing quilter. She's an amazing woman, does a lot of charities. And I'm rather uh, height challenged, barely five foot two. I, I 
my driver's license is five foot three, but it's lying. And <laughs> Victoria's over six feet tall. So having my picture taken with her was a real challenge, but it was fun at the same time. The next quilt, um, we sponsored at QuiltCon, we meaning Modern Quilts Unlimited magazine, sponsored a category called Modern in Miniature. And this quilt is called Modern Challenge by Katherine Redford, and it was the first prize winner in, in this category. And at first glance, it's like, oh, well, that's just a very simple little quilt. But when you really look at the detail, she took a very traditional hexagon, almost grandmother's flower garden type pattern and brought it into the modern world. The use of grays, the use of space, the negative space breaking the, the hexagons apart. Her stitching on the hexagons and all the points was impeccable. But then when it came time to quilt it, she decided the quilt could stand on its own. Now you have to remember this quilt is only 12 by 18 inches. So it, if it were a larger quilt, she couldn't have got away with minimal quilting. But by doing this simple echo in just a few lines, it was very effective. It was, it was very hard to turn away from this quilt, and I'm so glad that it took the first prize. It's so nice that we're able to see all of these that you're sharing. Well, the, the other interesting thing is, as I said earlier about the, uh, uh, about the gray, use of gray and mixing colors, look how the orange pops off of that. And she used multiple colors of orange. So there really is a lot of thought in these. Modern quilts aren't just slapped together for the most part. Um, there's really a lot of thought and a lot of detail, just as in any other type of quilting. And the same with the quilting in the background that goes along with it. So keep that in mind when you're looking at a customer quilt or your own quilt and how you want to quilt it. You know, keep, let the quilt talk to you. Don't just think an edge to edge is going to do it this time. Because not, it, sometimes it will, but sometimes it's not the answer. Yeah, when you have a lot of planning go into the quilting, it makes a big difference. And you can see there was, you know, this makes the quilt. Yeah. Now the next quilt coming up, I know it's just like children, you know, I see millions of quilts every year, and I'm not exaggerating, but something about this quilt speaks to me. I fell in love with this quilt. I stood in front of it forever at the show, and uh, they did search me when I left the show because they were sure I was going to take it with me. <laughs> well, they it's called Reflections in you. Gray. <laughs> uh, yeah, you've heard. <laughs> yeah, my reputation precedes me. Uh, Reflections in Gray by Mary Marcotte. And it's a very traditional pattern, and it took me a while to figure it out because of the way she put it together and, and, uh, and quilted it, but it's simply a bow tie. If you look at each block, it's simply a crossed bow tie, and then put together, but it's her use of colors and the way she positioned the blocks, um, and then threw in the yellow and threw in, you know, the, the circle. It made a, she, actually, it's just the piecing that made the circle, and just everything about it is just very, very well done. Um, I really liked that. Now, she, d she decided to quilt it with feathers, which is um, not always usual. Angela will talk about that a little bit later in, the, in her quilting section. But the way she put her feathers and crisscrossed them and just followed the bars and the lines in this was so effective. In the next slide, you can see a close-up. And you can see how they cross each other and just, it's just beautifully, beautifully executed. And I just, I want to take this quilt home. <laughs> Unfortunately, they wouldn't let me. <laughs> Vicki, I'm also surprised to see that there are feathers in there. It, and the overall quilt looks like the moon reflected in a pond. There's just so much to see when you look into this quilt. You know, it's interesting that you say that because when I, the first, when I first saw it, it stopped me in my tracks at the show. And then two or three other people walked up, and we all saw something different in it. And um, I saw a moon also, or a sun reflecting, either one. Someone else saw a, a, city, a city grid in a park. Um, it's just, it's your own, it's your own aesthetic and what, what, what you're thinking about at the time that you're looking at the quilt. And if you look very closely, especially at the close-up, all of those colors aren't just gray and brown and yellow. If you look, you can see greens and, and there's some stripes in there. Her use of color and the way she pieces together was just impeccable. I, I'm, I'm just blown away by this quilt. In case you haven't noticed, I'm totally blown away by this quilt. There's just so much to it that it draws you in. You just want to keep looking. 
and every time you see it, you see something different. Right, right. It's beautiful. The next quilt is by a favorite of ours, Katie Spencer. And I apologize to Katie. Her name is K-A-T-I. I misspelled it on that slide. Um, Katie did the cover quilt for our very first issue of Modern Quilts Unlimited. And it was similar but completely different than this quilt. It was uh, called Crooked Cabins, and it was blocks, um, a modern look at a, at a uh, log cabin block pushed together with a lot of negative space behind. And then she looked at it and she thought, well, I can do something different. And she kind of blew it apart, sliced up the, the diamonds, if you will, and, and she calls this one Broken Diamonds. Um, all solids. She, Katie has another unique feature in that she tends to do the back of her quilt exactly like the front, with the exception of using all solid squares. So where you see the, the large square that's got orange and green and pink and then blends out into blue and red and green, on the back that will be a solid piece of fabric square. I love that about her, her quilts, that you can turn them around and still have a quilt. Her, and on this uh, one, Vicki, I was just going to say, you can see where she had so many squares, and yet, same thing, she quilted it with circles. She And I was going to that with, a, on, you'll see it closer on the next uh, slide. To give it movement, she did concentric circles. And if you go back, I'm sorry, if you go back to the first slide, the largest square towards the bottom with the, with the kind of turquoise square towards the center is where she started. And then she just did concentric circles about a quarter of an inch apart all the way out across the quilt. Very effective, very full of movement. When you see it in person, it's not just a quilt hanging there. It really is lively and, and just speaks to you. And then if you go to the close-up again, the next slide, um, you can see just how close those circles are and how really impeccably done for such a large quilt. And I'm sorry that I don't have the sizes on these quilts. Um, they weren't always listed with my show materials. But um, the colors, that the, they're, they're, again, Marie, is the solid colors that you were talking about earlier. There's not a pattern on that quilt, but she created patterns with the solid colors. And I like the use of the black, how that... Yes, sense it, yeah. it out. Black always makes everything pop. Yeah. It used in used in small doses like that, it's very effective. Yeah, that one's beautiful. The next quilt is called Overgrown, and it was the what they called audience choice, which is more typically, I think, called viewers choice at a lot of the machine quilting shows. Um, very interesting by Allison Glass, and again, Lisa Sipes quilted this one. Um, Allison put together pieces of fabric, different fabrics, and then cut out her shapes from the pieced uh, patches. And just, it's almost like a weed growing up on a sidewalk or something all by itself, which is where she gets the overgrown title, I believe. Um, and then left all of that background for Lisa just to play. And as you can see, she did play. She kept the aesthetic. She, she followed the vine, if you will, and, the, and the, the lines of the quilt, but she had fun with each and every section. There's everything on here from um, curved cross hatching and pebbles. If you go to the next slide, there's actually a close-up and you can see the quilting better. And she just filled every space and it just, uh, it, it was fun to look at. And it, people, and I see why it, it got audience choice. People were crowded around it every day of the show. And it was just, uh, it just made you happy. You know, some quilts just make you happy. This one made me happy. This is a very nicely done quilt. Now, did, did Allison design the fabric in this quilt? I i can't answer that question. I'm not really sure. Uh, I, I would have to research it. But if, but if uh, I can post that afterwards if you want to add it to the presentation. Well, not to cut in, but um, she did design that for Andover. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you, Angela. Yeah. The next quilt is another one by Katie Spencer. It was in the mini category. And uh, she calls it New York Beauty. And I mentioned here that it kind of re it's reminiscent of a mariner's compass. And it's got the flying geese. And it's very traditional, although miniature, probably 18 to 20 inches square. However, it was her quilting that made this stand out. 
and a very straight line, modern aesthetic, the way she, the movement she did with just straight lines to make this, does this not look like it's just coming off of the screen in a, in a 3D format? It, it, it's just really, really well done. And the colors, I mean, going through the rainbow colors, which the flying geese in and of themselves give movement, but the use of the color with it helped tremendously. And matching up the colors in the New York Beauty points to the flying geese, that took a lot of work and a lot of thought, as did the quilting uh, of how to make that all work, come together and work. This was a really well done piece. And on the next slide, you can see it closer, and you can see how she accomplished that three-dimensional look. Just very, very fascinating. I wish I had the talent. That the, I, the, this is why I do a magazine. I write about it, and I watch Angela and all of these others with, with their incredible talents, and it just blows me away. See, and I'm just trying to pick my jaw up. I'm looking at this and just amazed at, you know, the color and the motion and also, you know, using the geometric in this fabric. Mm -hmm. and. Yeah, the very, very effective choices that she made. And the fact that she did them in circular, again, there we go, with offsetting the very angular stitching with the very circular quilting, the very graphic flying geese and points put in a circle, it all melds together just to make it flow beautifully. I was just going to say, I keep thinking the next, you know, this quilt's my favorite, and then you show another one, and I'm like, oh, no, this is my favorite. They're just amazing. <laughs> You know, we face that every day on the magazine. Every time someone does a submission and we go, oh, yeah, that has to go in the magazine. And then we get three more and we go, oh, they all have to. And pretty soon the magazine's going to be 300 pages each issue and that's just not going to happen. But it's so much fun to see what everybody's doing. You know, and it's just true for the machine quilting magazine as well. I mean, oh, the incredible quilting we get in, the, the incredible photos in that to put in that magazine. I, I really love my job. It's, I have one of the most fun jobs in the world. Well, we love that you have that job because we love that you share with us. So we're glad to have all these available to us to see. So as you can see, you know, quilting modern means many things to many people. Um, modern, I, I'm not even sure that modern is, in my view, the, the, the even correct term. It's, it should be evolution, quilting evolution. Because they, everybody still is married to their roots. Quilting is quilting is quilting, and it's how you approach it. So having said that, I'm going to turn this over to Angela Walters, who can show us um, machine quilting from, a, or uh, modern quilting, excuse me, from a professional quilter's perspective. And Angela's got some incredible quilts to show us as well. Oh, well, thanks, Vicki. I'm excited to be here. And Marie, you're doing such a great job advancing those slides. I'm probably just going to have you do them for me, too. Okay, I like having control. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, um, again, I'm Angela, and I'm excited to be here talking about machine quilting. Um, I've been machine quilting for 10 years, so it's obviously something that I love and something that I love to talk about, especially. Um, and today, we're going to kind of take that a step further and talk about machine quilting modern quilts. And I love traveling and teaching, and this is a question that comes up a lot. You know, how do, how do you quilt modern quilts? Well, in my opinion, great quilting enhances the quilt top. You know, whether that's a traditional quilt or a modern quilt, um, great quilting is another layer of art on the quilt. So to me, modern machine quilting is just quilting that happens to be on a modern quilt. Um, but as we go through the slides, I'm, I'm excited to show you some different things that I take into account and ideas that I have when I'm quilting different quilts. And, and hopefully, you know, the people that are here with us today can maybe take some of those pointers and apply them in a way that they would like. Um, but before we start, I have to say, like, the first rule for machine quilting is to do what you like. Um, just as you would use the fabric that you like for a quilt and the pattern that you like, you should also do the machine quilting that you like. Um, I'm not going to sit here and say that there's only one way to do anything. I just only happen to be an expert on what I like. <laughs> so I'm more than happy to share, you know, what I like, but I just want people to understand that, you know, they should really kind of take what they see and, and put their own twist on it and make it work for them, because I think that's definitely the most important. Um, but I set up this this uh, slideshow kind of more like a trunk show, less of a, you know, normally when I travel, I kind of have my points and I have my pictures, and this is just kind of, you know, I picked out some quilts, and I'm just going to kind of talk through the things that I was thinking of uh, when I decided on the quilting designs and really just kind of share those points just as though we were having a little chat. Sound good, Marie? That sounds really good. <laughs> uh, and I would just tell anyone, if they get a chance to take one of your classes, 
take it. <laughs> it was Aww. really, it was fun. Besides, I learned a lot. I came home so excited, I made it two or three quilts modern. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you. I didn't even have to pay you to say that nice thing. I appreciate that. Okay, I'll have a Diet Coke. Ad. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, this first quilt that I'm showing is Dimensions. It's actually a quilt that I designed and pieced um, for Modern Quilts Unlimited for their booth at Quilt Market. Um, and this is kind of a rarity for me. I don't, quilt, I don't piece a lot of quilts. Um, I do like piecing, but I love machine quilting and would much rather quilt. So every once in a while I, I make a quilt, but not too often. But um, what I, wanted, what I picked this quilt out for is to talk about you know, using the quilting to enhance the overall design. Um, I think that quilting is just like makeup. You, know, you want to use it to enhance the parts of the quilt um, and not overshadow. I think Vicki talked about that wonderfully earlier. You know, the quilting should be, I think, the second thing that you see in a quilt. Um, it shouldn't detract from the quilt top itself, unless, of course, it's a whole cloth quilt, and you know, all's fair in that, in that regards for sure. <laughs> But in this design, you know, when, when I was piecing it, and it's really just a couple of half square triangles and some solid squares, you know, made to make an interesting pattern, well, I wanted the quilting to enhance that shape of the pattern. And so if you kind of advance the slide, you'll see in the next one, um, you know, that I've used the dent back and forth lines in the yellow and tan portion to kind of flatten that down and almost make that kind of like the background. So I quilted them all the same, all go in the same direction. But in the actual blocks, I tried to follow the shape. So I kind of quilted that V with some straight lines and for contrast added in a different design, which is that kind of ribbon candy design. And in fact, something that I'll talk about a lot is contrast. You know, how to use contrast in your quilting, you know, to really make stuff pop out. And in this instance is a great example of that. You know, in the yellow and tan squares or triangles. Um, the quilting is more dense than it is in the other blocks, and it just adds a little bit of contrast and helps kind of create that depth so that there's a background and a foreground a little bit, and I think really helps kind of make the design pop off of the quilt. So if you're sitting there looking at a quilt, you might be thinking, well, how can I use that to enhance the design? And the next slide even shows that, even a little bit up closer. Um, it's a little dark, but I think you can see it um, fairly well, how it follows the shape of the block but it's still keeping that background quilting nice and dense. And the great thing about quilting is you can use it to enhance different parts of the quilt. You know, if I really wanted to make that tan and yellow part pop out, I would have quilted it in a different way, but I didn't. I wanted that to almost be the background. So, you know, just being mindful of the different portions of the quilt that you want to enhance will really help, you know, help you decide the quilting designs that you want to use. So do you decide when you piece your quilt how you're going to quilt it, or do is that an afterthought? How, how do you... What's that process for you? You know, it's, it's different for each quilt. Um, this quilt I was kind of designing with the quilt design in mind because um, it was a free quilt pattern being offered. So I wasn't necessarily, I didn't know how I was going to quilt it beforehand, but I'm definitely thinking about that the whole time I'm piecing it. You know, how am I going to quilt this? What am I going to do? Um, and that's not to say that I don't change my mind once I start. I mean, I definitely have been known to change my mind a couple times. But it's always, I mean, as a machine quilter, how I'm going to quilt the quilt is always kind of on my mind. And you use a long arm, don't you, Angela? I do. I have a handy quilter Avante, and I love it. Love it, love it. So, yep. And Angela, if I can interject here, um, sure. that pattern is still on our website, on the Web Extras page, as a free download to anybody that would like to have it. That's great. And I think that anybody that read the pattern would be surprised how simple it is. So it, it's, it's actually just four pieces, very easy. Yeah, it looks very complicated, but it's not. It's all in the colors. All right, so moving on, let's talk a little bit about using thread color. Um, again, this kind of goes back to the whole quilting needs to um, enhance the quilt and not overpower it. Now, I'm the first to say that I'm kind of, I don't want to say a lazy quilter. We'll say efficient. I'm an efficient quilter. I like it to be fast and fun, but there are times where quilting, you know, you have to match the thread to the fabrics, especially um, with the solid solid fabrics. And I say you have to. I, I mean, I have to. That's what I prefer. <laughs> Anybody can definitely do what they want. Um, this quilt right here was designed and pieced by Heather Jones, and you can tell it has a very bold pattern, very contrasting colors. There is no way I could find a thread color that would blend over all of those. So I love Heather, so I decided to go ahead and use all three different colors. So using a different orange and a blue and a white to really make sure that the quilting doesn't overpower the quilt. But the bonus of using blending thread is that you can throw in some fun details and really have fun with the quilting without worrying that it's going to take away from the quilt. 
So I think that if you saw this quilt across the room or even here on the screen, I hope that the first thing that you would see is actually the quilt pattern. But if you advance the slide and you'll see a little bit more um, closer detail, you can see that I've, I had fun with it still. And I, you know, going through the white and over, um, you can see that it's like a stripe with a back and forth line. And it kind of, if you look close enough, it kind of goes under one orange bar and then it almost looks like it goes over the other and, and under the next. And, and I was able to do that because I used blending thread. And, and again, just adding those little pops of detail, it just keeps it fun. And so thread color does play an important role for me when I'm picking out how to, how to quilt quilts. Okay, so I am not going to call you a lazy quilter because <laughs> look at all that quilting. <laughs> well, I, I'd like to say efficient. I don't want to spend, you know, a month quilting a quilt. I, I want to make it fun and fast. And I always tell my students, you know, good enough is good enough. You know, it's, we're, finished is better than perfect. You know, we're just good here to have fun, and I'm not stressing out about stitch length, and I'm not stressing out about, you know, is it perfectly lined up? It's not. If you look close enough, you'll see that it's not. But you know what? It looks good, and, and, and I'm happy with how it turned out, oh, for sure. We love it. Oh, thanks. <laughs> All right, so speaking of having fun with quilts, the next quilt will show you that I do have a, a sense of humor when it comes to quilting. Again, I kind of get bored when I'm quilting quilts, so I like to throw in, you know, some fun details every now and again and just really have fun with it. And this quilt, um, designed in piece by Tula Pink, you know, gave me some definite inspiration when it came to the quilting designs. And, you know, and just talking, I just want to take a moment and just kind of talk through, you know, what I was thinking when I thought, huh, I should quilt a feather with a spider web in it, um, <laughs> how that kind of came about. You know, I draw a lot of inspiration for my quilting designs from the fabric itself, from the quilt pattern, um, from the inspiration. I mean, I want to think about the quilt as a whole and how I can use the quilting to add to that. And, you know, I think sometimes I might overthink it a bit, but, you know, it's all in good fun. So in this quilt, the fabric is a Halloween-themed print, and it has like a spider, and, you know, it has all this kind of interesting detail. And, you know, and I think Tula's quilts are usually are definitely actually strong enough to hold up for some interesting quilting. And so, and I'm, I'm fortunate that she gives me free range <laughs> with the quilting as well. So what better way than to, you know, try to take some of those fun, quirky details in her fabric and put them through in the quilting. So by quilting those feathers, but in an, an unusual way, you know, so that they look like they're going behind the piecing. Um, using a contrasting filler, you know, that dense back and forth line to really make them pop out. And then adding those fun, silly details like spider webs. And there's actually a few little spiders in there. And, and one of the little spiders in the quilting is quite smart. And he quilted Tula in the web. So I don't have a picture of that. But, you know, using the blending thread and just having fun with it means that you can throw in those, those fun little things just to keep it interesting. And the next slide will actually show you, um, you know, a little bit closer up of, of some of that detail. And, again, it's just fun. It, you know, quilting it shouldn't be... I don't think it should be boring or tedious. I think it should be fun, and, you know, you can really add some interesting aspects with that. This is another one of those that just draws you in. You just want to keep looking and find all those fun little things, like the spider webs here and there. And You know, and, and I don't even, it's not like I sit there and plan out where I'm going to put stuff, but especially, you know, for Tula and some people that I know that are fine with it, I'll, I'll hide little things in there, and you know, I'll get a call even sometimes months down the road, like, oh my goodness, I just saw that you did, you know, this, and I'm like, oh, I know, isn't that kind of fun? It's, it's kind of like my own joke. I, I don't know, maybe I just have a weird sense of humor or something, <laughs> but um, I love to do that, and I can get away with that because I'm using thread that blends, and it's, it's not overtaking the quilt. Now, this quilt is a little bit different because the quilting is quite intense, but this was for quilt market, and you know, if you ever walk down the booths at Quilt Market, there's a lot of stuff going on. And, and any time I can, you know, use the quilting to help pull somebody in her booth or, or any of my customers' booths, I think that's an important thing. So, just so Angela, thought. do you love it when a customer says, do anything you want on the quilt? Oh, absolutely. But you know what I love more is when they give me a bit of a direction. Um, it's kind of like saying, you know, I want, this is my inspiration. I am imagining that this looks like rain. Like, I want to know what they're favorite part of the quilt is, what their inspiration for the quilt top is, and I want to make the quilting kind of make that all come together. So I do love free reign, but I do love knowing, you know, if somebody doesn't like feathers, I want to know that because it's subjective. Everybody likes different stuff with quilting. And so I don't want to put, I could quilt a really nice feather, but 
picky. If you don't like feathers, you're not going to like it. So I do like free reign, but I love to have, you know, some parameters and some things so that I can make sure that they're really happy with how it turns out. So Angela, you've talked about using blendable thread, and what have you mm -hmm. used on this one? I almost always use Superior So Fine Thread. Um, it's a poly thread, and it just blends so beautifully, but it's strong enough for high-speed, you know, machine quilting, and um, I can usually get away with finding a neutral thread in the so fine that will blend over different parts of the quilt. So, for instance, in this quilt, it was a gray thread, and I just use it in the blocks, and I think it looks just fine. So, yeah, that's what I use almost exclusively. I love it. But moving on to the next quilt, this quilt was actually a piece by Emily Sear. Um, and this is a great example of contrast in using quilting to establish, you know, the background and the foreground. Um, I talk about that a lot, and I do that a lot because I think it's a great way to add depth to the quilt and to really, I don't know, make the quilting more, the quilt of more of a 3D object. So in this quilt, um, I actually collaborated with Emily, and she, she specifically said, I want to think foreground versus background. So when I'm doing that, I need to think, well, what do I want to make the background? The obvious choice would be the yellow, so a dense, um, you know, swirl quilting really flattens that down. Well, to help contrast and to kind of give it that difference in the white fashing or borders of the blocks, I contrasted it with less quilting and a design that is, you know, um, totally different, a straight line as opposed to the swirl. And I just think that any time that you can use a quilting to enhance the quilt in that matter is, is a fun idea as well. And so, and then moving on, Another thing I love to do is create a secondary pattern with a quilting. And in fact, I have brought a couple of pictures of that to share. Um, I think that quilting can add those secondary patterns to the quilt that add interest and kind of even give the quilt a little bit more of a, I don't know, a 3D look or more, more depth, more interest. And this quilt was actually pieced with the idea of just blocks. Um, it wasn't pieced to be that, that wasn't pieced to be the medallion part of the quilt, but by using the quilting in a way that's rotated and pointing to the center, not only does it draw your eye into the middle of the quilt, which she, Jennifer, told me was the most important part of the quilt to her, was that middle kind of glow. We would kind of joked, like, keep the glow. <laughs> and so I, knowing what the important part of the quilt was to her, I was able to use the quilting to add interest, to create that secondary pattern, but also help draw somebody's eye into the missile as well. And again, it's nothing hard. Like, I don't think that it should be necessarily hard. It's just a couple of straight lines filled in with, with a filler used in a different way. So that's a good example of that. And if you go to the next slide, you can see um, it's a little bit of a different example. This is a detail uh, of a quilt designed and pieced by Julie Herman. The same concept, but just on a smaller scale. Uh, if I remember correctly, I don't know, say these squares were three inches. So, you know, you, can, you don't have to quilt it to death like I do. That's just what I like to do. But you could, you know, just do the straight lines and still have that interesting secondary pattern, adding a little bit of um, oomph, if you will, to, you know, some plain solid blocks. When I say plain, you know, I mean like this, so they're solid. They're not plain in interest at all. So, again, an example that you don't have to go all out with the quilting. Um, the next quilt is also a great example of a secondary pattern. When, when I look at a quilt top and I'm not sure how I'm going to quilt it, I always kind of look at the lines in the piecing and I, I imagine what would that look like if it was extended? What, and I kind of envision in my mind a little bit, you know, what, what, what would that look like? Well, in this quilt top, um, the most important thing was the pattern, but also that the pattern kind of had this diagonal. And so I wanted the quilting to go along with that. And so Really, I mean, I'm, I was so thrilled with how this turned out. Again, Vicki, my reputation is that I always threaten to keep my customer quilts. Um, I never have, but I always think about it. <laughs> and uh, I, one, I'm right there with you. <laughs> oh, it's so hard because you're like, oh. Especially this one. This is a stunning quilt. I mean, the piecing is impeccable, but your quilting just made the quilt. And it, the thing is, it's not that hard. Like, it's not difficult. And if you move to the next slide, you'll see that in the in the white block, I just extended the lines there and just kind of made it a nice diagonal. I added a couple extra lines, so I have the one going to the center and then one on each side. Again, a little pop of contrast to help that stick out. And then I just filled in each, design, each side with a different design. It's a swirl and a back and forth line. But in the piecing, I kind of alternated. You know, so where there's that dense back and forth line in the background, 
in the piecing, that's where I use the swirl. So there's only two different designs and some straight lines in this quilt, but the example is that it, using it in a different way to create those secondary patterns really adds interest to the quilt and enhances the quilt top as well. And I think the next slide shows um, just an even more close-up shot of that so that you can see, again, it's, and you don't even have to do it as dense as I did it. I mean, I, again, I quilt it till it's dead, but even if you did just a simple, you know, looser swirl, you could still get that same effect with um, less dense quilting. Well, you, you quilted it densely, but you did not overpower it, and I think that's a key to keep in mind mm -hmm. when you're quilting is, will this design enhance the quilt or will it take over? Absolutely, and again, using that blending thread really helps, you know, a thinner thread that really helps me get away with that. So, but again, that's something I definitely have to be mindful of, knowing my preferences, that I, I have to be careful not to overwhelm the quilt. And um, it was funny because when I was at QuiltCon, somebody said, you know, can you use too many designs in a quilt? And I think you can if you use the wrong kind of thread, um, but I don't know. I, I like a lot of quilting. That's definitely just, just my, uh, my interest. And so in the next one, I think, is another example of just another quick example of a secondary pattern um, in those solid blocks, adding some interest, kind of imagining what it would look like if there were lines, you know, connecting all the corners and, and how to fill that in. And this is actually um, a fun, easy idea, and this is something I'll be talking about in some of my classes, dot-to-dot -dot quilting, where you just use points of the quilt to, you know, um, create this interesting design with no marking. Because again, I like it fun and fast, and so marking definitely goes against that, <laughs> that idea, for sure. And let's see what the next one is. I think it's another one of Emily's quilt. Yes, I, this again, um, piece, designed in piece by Emily Sear. I, I love it, so fun, but this is a great example of using the piecing as inspiration. Um, you know, sometimes it's the fabric, sometimes it's you know, what the quilt is represent this time, it's all about the piecing. You have those wonderful curved lines, and I just followed them in different ways. You know, I wanted to add a little contrast by changing up the direction within the blocks, but mostly just sticking to that nice flow. Um, but then let's talk about, you know, the borders. Mm -hmm. She specifically has a skinny border on one side and a large one on the other. Um, and I wanted to, you know, enhance that look of it. So on one side, I quilted, you know, um, that swirl design nice and simply, and on the other side, I did it a lot larger and, and echoed it, making it more of a focal point. Um, this is kind of an example of statement quilting, and I think it's important to talk about, you know, when can a quilt handle something like that? Um, first of all, you know, if you like it, then definitely do it, but I think, you know, maybe most quilts couldn't handle something so big, but the fact that this was, this is actually a smaller quilt, you can't really tell from the picture, and the fact that she purposely has the board, side borders different sizes, it goes along with the design, I think, and doesn't overpower. Um, again, I'll say it again, blending thread is important. And then also kind of keeping consistent with the designs. You know, it's the, the statement quilting in the side, it's curvy, has a nice flow, it goes with the blocks. It's not so um, different that it's distracting, in my opinion, you know, from the piecing. And, the blocks in the quilt are so boldly colored and so bright that I felt like it could handle this. And plus, I know that Emily likes my quilting style so that she wouldn't be too mad at me. <laughs> so I think moving on to the next slide, we'll show you a little detail shot of the block. And again, just using that piecing kind of and, and having fun with the shape. And then again, the contrast in the white, um, that dense back and forth as opposed to the wishbone, just to kind of give it a little bit of contrast and help it stand out just a little bit. So kind of kind of a fun example. All right, moving on. I, I include this slide as a good example because one question I get asked all the time is, you know, what kind of color thread do you use on the bobbin? And this is actually a shot of the back of a quilt. Um, I use I almost always use thread that blends on the top, and I always use thread that matches in the bobbin to the top. Um, I just feel like it's important that if you, if you use two different colors, you have kind of run into the chance where that bottom color will show. And so if you have white on the bottom and purple on the top, then you'll see that purple come through. And personally, I don't mind if the quilting shows on the back. I love it. Um, so, you know, whether you're piecing a quilt, it's kind of important to be mindful. You know, what color or thread will I use when I'm quilting this? Maybe that kind of plays a, a part into your um, backing choice. But again, I think it's fun when you can see the quilting on the back. But that was just to address that that kind of point. 
And then moving on is another quilt that I actually pieced. I tell you what, every once in a while I get it together. But don't be too impressed. It's just raw edge applique. I just cut those suckers out and ironed them on. I'm still I gonna, impressed. <laughs> I was gonna. I knew I was gonna quilt the heck out of it anyway. So you know what was the point? But this is a great example of going all out, but just a little bit. Um, this is a smaller quilt, and and I knew I wanted to do something fun, but you know I didn't want to spend forever on it. So I thought, well, I'll just in, I'll just do a couple smaller parts with some crazy quilting and keep the rest fairly simple. So in the piecing, you know, just your just some. I don't want to say every day, but you know, some basic designs, some arcs, and some figure eights, and, and contrasting, of course, switching up the different designs. And then even in the blue corners, you know, just doing, you know, an easy back and like a wavy line to add that texture. But if you advance to the next slide, you can see that in the gray, you know, there's little bits of gray on the edge. I went all out, but just a little bit. No, <laughs> and, you really you know, went I all always, out. <laughs> <laughs> but it, I, I went all out, but just like in a small portion of the quilt. There's no need to, you know, go crazy over the whole thing if that's not what you're wanting to do. But I show this example to show you. I always joke to my classes, but it's true. If you want, like, people to be impressed by your quilting, quilt really small, whatever it is, and then use blending thread. And, and people will say, oh, that's great. But this is an example of just, you know, having fun and throwing in some different stuff. And when I was quilting this quilt, I kind of joke, but it's almost like a zen moment when you can just quilt and your mind is kind of not thinking about what you're doing, your arms are kind of taking over. And so when, when you practice, and I think if you can relax enough as a machine quilter to get to that point where you can say, you know what, I'm, I'm enjoying this, I'm not overthinking it, um, I think that's where a lot of quilters get in trouble, they're, over, they're overthinking the quilting. So it's important to kind of get to reach that zen, you know, if I'm going to sound a little new agey, I guess that's fine. But you know, so this is just a good example of, you know, combining designs, just having fun, and just, you know, going all out, but just a little bit. <laughs> the the relaxing is important, Angela. Your circles are so perfect in that, and uh, my husband always jokes that if somebody wants to see a perfect square, they should watch me try to do a circle. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's so funny. Um, well, you know, it just comes with practice. I always say quilting is just like handwriting. Um, you know, the more you do it, the more you can do it consistently. You know, I think back to when I learned how to handwrite my name, you know, writing that A, I really had to think about, you know, okay, go around and really had to work that in my mind. But now I can sign my name without thinking about it. And I can sign my name bigger or smaller. And quilting is the same way. And I think when people are stressed or overwhelmed by it, it just all comes down to practice and it all just comes down to teaching your brain how to design flows. Plus that I mean I've been doing this like once or twice. So that helps too. <laughs> getting yeah. those getting them <laughs> consistent. <laughs> But um, the next quilt is one that I actually pieced, and this is, it was kind of funny, and I hate to get too into it, but like, I was in a, not a dark place, but I was kind of like creatively like, ugh. So I decided it was time to make a quilt, and I have no clue where this quilt came from, because it doesn't, it's not my color scheme. I've never made an improv, improv, improvisational quilt, improvisational quilt, and I've never, I, I just did a lot of stuff on this quilt, like the yellow, I would never have thought I would use that, but anyway. Um, so this is a great I put this on because, first of all, I love it. But second of all, like, I think it's great to use the quilt design itself as the quilting inspiration. So when we talk through this, I'll show you how I use the actual shape of the blocks in the quilting design itself to kind of echo the blocks and really kind of bring that whole design home. Um, so if you move to the next one, you can see, first I'll talk about the, the rings on the inside of the quilt. You know, I, I think it's fun to use a bunch of different designs. And in this quilt, I had to change thread a couple of times. But sometimes I was able to use the same thread color in different ones. Um, but just having fun with it. And I wanted to quilt each ring separately from the other. I figure if I take the time to piece it with different fabrics, I want to take the time to quilt it with different designs. Um, while it is a little bit harder and takes a little bit longer, I was very thrilled with how it turned out. Um, and then moving on to the next one, you can see that around the piecing, I kind of emphasized that same shape, that same triangle overlapping shape with the quilting. Again, having the contrast, because I wanted it to show up a little bit, since I'm using thread that blends, I knew that I could get away with a little bit of a contrast. But the difference here, if you notice, instead of quilting each of those sections with a different quilting design, like in the piecing, you know, in the blue I did the circles, and in some I did back and forth lines. In the quilting, I kept it fairly with the same, oh, I did, I kept the same design. I just didn't want it to be too much in the quilting. I was already doing the design, I was already doing it really dense, and I think by throwing in every one of those triangles that I quilted, 
um, in the yellow with different designs, I really would have, you know, maybe, maybe overpowered a little bit. And then, of course, on the outside, you can't really see a whole lot, but I added some wavy lines. I really wanted to emphasize that this thing in the middle, whatever it's supposed to be, um, that it was separate from the flowy lines behind it. So, you know, I think just thinking about the inspiration of the quilt and, and kind of, I don't know, thinking through it, it really makes it kind of fun. So I also, had, um, the last few pictures I'll show you are just some um, easy quilting samples. Again, some last little pointers on different ways to add a little bit of interest with your quilting. And the first thing I love to do is to combine designs. I think it's a fun, easy way to come up with something different um, and to really have fun with the quilting. If you already know how to quilt a swirl and you already know how to quilt a circle, why not combine them and have three designs that you know instead of two? Uh, when I started quilting machine quilts, or <laughs> machine quilting modern quilts, I didn't try to think about all these new different designs. I just tried to take the ones that I already knew and loved and try to figure out how I can use them in a different way. So this is just an example of that. Um, the next one, again, nice easy squares. This is nothing too complex, but by changing up the size of some of them, um, making the smaller ones and then having the bigger ones to create a band across the quilt, it's just an easy way to not only have fun with the quilting, but to add that little bit of interest that will draw somebody in to look closer. And then to finish up with the last one, um, is an example of the tiles quilting design. It's actually in my first book, but this is a little bit more intense. There's a lot of stuff going on, on in each tile. But I, w I show this as an example of texture. And um, Vicki, you talked about this a little bit, how quilting can add such a nice texture to the quilt, so much interest. And I think in this, this small picture, um, it looks a little overwhelming, but this quilt is large. And if you saw it all together, um, I think that, you know, uh, you just have to take my word for it, that it doesn't overpower the quilt. And by keeping the quilting in the blocks fairly simple and the background kind of more intense with that texture, it just helps create that different foreground. So, you know, when you're looking at your quilts or if somebody is trying to figure out how to quilt, think of, you know, things that will add a nice texture. And again, blending thread will definitely help with that. It also helps your eye to move around the quilt to have the different mm -hmm. types of quilting in and I out. Agree. I agree. And it just makes you look longer. And I think that if somebody is, you know, quilting, you know, for a magazine or quilting for a booth or some to show their quilt or even to hold up in their guild, you know, the longer that you can keep somebody's attention, the better, I think. So. Yeah. And then the next slide is just a few things that I think about um, when I'm trying to quilt a quilt. If, if nothing else, if, if nothing else that I've said is really kind of, you know, jog, you know, kind of inspired you, think about when you're looking at a quilt and you're trying to decide how should I quilt this quilt, I always ask myself, what's the most important thing about the quilt? And make the quilting point to that. Is it the pattern? Is it the piecing? Is it the inspiration? So I think that's an easy place to start. And once you get your focus, your focal point, well, if it's the piecing, well, how am I going to enhance the piecing? And secondly, um, what's the inspiration for the quilt pattern? Sometimes I'll have customers give me a quilt and they'll say, well, obviously it's such and such. And I'm like, well, I'm glad you said that because it's not so obvious to me, but I can use the quilting to help convey. So if somebody is, you know, if you made a quilt and you're thinking, I think it looks like raindrops falling on the ground, well, then obviously you want to use circular designs and really kind of contribute to that flowy kind of look. So, but I say all of this to say the most important thing is just to do what you love because you're the one that's going to be quilting it. And if you're going to be quilting on it for several hours, you might as well be enjoying what you're doing. And I think that any time that anybody tells you that you have to do one thing, then that's probably not the thing to do. So I'm super excited. That kind of wraps up my part of it. I think I've sat on my soapbox enough. Um, and yes, I do. I have two books, uh, Free Motion Quilting with Angela Walters and In the Studio with Angela Walters. If I talked about something that you're, I didn't clarify, please hop on my blog, quiltingismytherapy.com. Um, there's a comment or a contact me um, part to that and ask, ask away. I'll definitely answer it. And if I don't know the answer, I'll just act like I didn't get the email. <laughs> just kidding. Um, so I hope that, you know, you'll visit me at my blog as well. Okay, and then I think the next slide, uh, we would like to offer you, thank you for listening to us today. This was very fun, and I'm sure it was for Angela, too. We like to bounce off of each other. Um, and for listening, we would like to offer you a 20% discount on either one of our magazines that, that you would be interested in. If you just look at the coupon, it's good for, the, for a whole week. Um, just go in and 
see what we're all about. You can also order back issues. We do have a back issue sale going on as well. So enjoy the magazines. And thank you so much, Handy Quilter, for having us do this. This was so much fun. I enjoyed yes, it very much. Absolutely. Oh, thanks to both of you for being here and for sharing with us so much to gain from having you here and so much about quilting and the things we love to see and hear and hopefully try all these things. So we're excited about having the magazine offer. Uh, thank you both for joining us. And just as a reminder, we will not be having a webinar in April or May, but we will resume in June. So the second Thursday in June, you can look for a new webinar. And Happy Quilter is uh, excited to announce a special this uh, week. It actually starts on March 16th. Is that the starts starts today? and goes till the 20th, and we're offering a lot of uh, zero down and no interest, so check out these incredible offers that are available on our machines and on the Pro Stitcher, and thanks again to Angela and to Vicki, and we'll be talking to you soon. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.